Hey, saints, praise God. Listen, get yourselves together. We got about a, a minute before we roll out in this train here. I got a car shot. with me, people. Okay. Okay, got a minute before we roll out in this train, so we're getting ready to go forward. Call a friend, call a loved one. Let us know. Um, call a friend, let a loved one and let them know that we're getting ready to move forward in the word of God with Bible study. As I so often say to everyone, please give me, if you would, if you would just bless me enough and give me 40, 45 minutes of your time, I promise you, God will bless you with a word that will be beneficial for you in the growth of God's word. So if you will, let's go with me um, before the throne of grace in prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you. And we honor you for this day, for our health, life, strength. For the heart and the mind which you have given us in your word, Lord, I pray right now that you bless us, that we have our hearts and minds set ready to receive thy word, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you bless me right now, that I may stay focused on the word of that which you have called me to do. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of anything that I have indulged in, in any way, form, or fashion. That's in the natural or the spiritual realm. If I have thought anything... Lord, if I have said anything, did anything that is not pleasing to you and will cause division between my mind, Lord, and the Holy Spirit having this way, please forgive me, Lord. Do not hold it against thy people, Lord, that um, the word may not be able to come through this vessel to be able to speak to thy people, Lord. I, right now, by my own free will, I give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over this message that he may freely speak to thy people, Lord. Help me that I may stay. Help us that we may stay. Help the saints that we may all stay holy and not right before you in our thinking, in our um, words, and in our deeds. Lord, bless us that we may have our minds focus on the word today to hear what it is that you have to say to us, for us, about us, Lord. Let us grow in your will that we may know exactly what it is you are calling on us to do. Now, Lord, as for the saints, to those that are right here with us now, Lord, I pray that they have their minds set and ready to receive the word, that they are ready to hear what you say, Lord God, by removing all distractions that they may not miss, not one grain of truth that you may bring forth. To those that are here, not here right now, but making their way to get to a safe place where they may be able to view the message or even maybe viewing the message while they are driving or what have you, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus that you may get them to a safe place. Get them home or where they, they're able to sit down and view the message, Lord, without distractions, that they may hear what it is you have for them in thy word, Lord. And to those who will not be joining us tonight for whatever reason, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus that you may bless them, Lord, that they may um, make their way, Lord, to this page or this channel, that they may receive the message that you have for them, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus right now and put myself before you, Lord, a vessel wide open that you may use me according to thy will. I stand firm, Lord God, on your word, trusting you, Lord, and the authority that you have given me by binding any demonic spirit that raises up with the purpose of bringing division, Lord God, of bringing, Lord God, in any way, form, or fashion, um, stress in any way, stress or division to thy saints. Lord, keep our hearts and minds steadfast on you that we may grow according to your word, law, will, and way. Now, for doing this, Lord, we're careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now, this prayer, we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior, for you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Now, if you are in agreement with that prayer, saints, you're sticking about by saying, amen. And that is, we're standing in, um, standing in line with God's word, and I agree with what it said. I will put my amen to it, meaning you will put your stamp of approval. That's why it behooves you to listen to what's being said, what's being prayed about. Don't just go with it because some person said it. You want to go with, um, stay with God's word. Make sure God's word is being spoken to the matter. So now, guys, what we're at, we're at Acts. And we're at the 23rd chapter, Acts the 23rd chapter. And we have been going through and we have studied. Now, we went through a couple of verses here, which was verse, um, actually, we're going to read down in our ever popular slingshot effect and going back and then going forward to that word. So we'll just say verse number five down to verse number eight. So we have to take four verses here. And it says, it says, then said Paul, I wish not, brethren, that he would. He was the high priest, for it for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of gods of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that the one part was sad to see, and the other 
Pharisee, he cried out in the, in the council, men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, son of a Pharisee, of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. I am called in question. And when they and when they had so said, and when he had so said, there arose a great dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. And the Sadducees uh, says, for the Sadducees said that there is no resurrection, neither angels, neither spirits, but the Pharisees confessed both. And so what we did last week as we was going through and studying those verses, we was really beginning to get into exactly what it is that God um, is saying to you. So what Paul did, remember, he was pulled in uh, uh, the scribe with a, the religious leaders did not like Paul and for him proclaiming the word of God through Jesus Christ. They did not like that. They did not agree with that. And so they caused a great uproar. Remember what Paul did is he pleaded with the people, um, asked the Roman soldier, can I speak to the people? And he asked him, well, do you speak Hebrew? Yes, Paul was bilingual. Matter of fact, he was multilingual. And so as Paul was beginning to speak the word to the people, um, speaking to him, everybody hushed and was quiet. And then Paul went in and as he began to speak and he gave his, um, gave his, um, uh, Claim that, you know, he made his claim. I have done nothing wrong. And the high priest told him to speak to him. As high priest said, smack him. Paul had to deal with that issue, but yet have reverence for the man of God. But Paul being a wise one of, um, of Jewish culture and faith, he began to perceive that the, the assembly was divided. One half was Sadducee, one half was Pharisee. The Pharisees, um, the Pharisees did not believe in angels or spirit speaking to them meaning the Holy Spirit. The Sadducees believe both of them. And so the division came. Paul said, well, y'all are y'all coming at me because I believe this. Well, when you state where it is that you believe in what you stand on, somebody believe like you. And so when they know what side you're on, they will fight with you because we're fighting from the same point of view. And so that's what Paul was doing is he stood there and he began to um, look at the house divided. And that's what we were saying. You've got to know those as labor among you. You have to know those and where they stand. Because if you believe in or you have attached yourself to someone that don't believe like you believe. And that's why the word of God tells you, don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. You have to find people that think like you. People that um, are going in the same direction you're going in. As the saying go, birds of the same feather all flock together. So if you don't believe um, um, the same way a person believed, the word of God tells you a house divided cannot stand. And so you have to know who, sta who stands for the Lord Jesus. Now, let me say this. You may even have people that believe like you believe, but they don't take it as serious as you take it. Sometimes there are just certain levels in Christ Jesus that people, they're not going where you're going. They're not as dedicated as you are. Now, that's not to say they're not saved, but I can promise you they're not going to see from God as much as you would see if you're all in. The more you give to God in prayer and studying and time and fasting and meditation, you will find out that God will speak with you more, spend more time with you, show you deeper things. But you have saints that do not want to live in holiness. And holiness means consecrated and set aside. And so when you're talking about holiness, that's just not a word. That's just not meaning you put on some white and that makes you holy. No, that's a mindset. And so when that mind is set to holiness, that is loving what God loves, hating what God hates, standing on that and believing God every step of the way, spending some time with God, you will find out that God will open up truths to you that you would never even imagine that you could find out. And God says, I want to let you know more. I want you to see more. I want you to go deeper with you and show you things. And people look at you like, where do you get such truths? Or, okay, here comes that holy roller. Here comes little Jesus. And that's what they would do. They would try to mock you or put you down. But what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to stand firm. And before I go any further, I was sitting there day, honestly, with the Holy Spirit. And I know it had to be him because the devil is never going to tell you to do anything to build God's kingdom. And so that's what it means by a house divided will not stand. So if you have thought come to your heart, your heart or your mind, and it's about... Um, exalting the name of Jesus or encouraging the body of Christ, that is of God. The devil is never going to tell you to exalt a person in Christ Jesus or encourage someone. He's never going to tell you that. Nor will God have you to beat a person down for the sake of just beating them down or put them under condemnation. That's why Paul says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So what it is, is even though you may fall short, 
a person or a believer, a mature believer is going to come beside you and encourage you along the way. But I was sitting today and I was, um, the Holy Spirit just came to my heart and I don't know why, but he wanted me to speak to you all. And so I'll take a moment in time. I want to talk to you guys. Okay. God loves you. He truly does. Now you're going to have to make your mind up to go forward in Christ. A lot of people are turning back or just quitting. Or a lot of people will not give their all at all. We have a lot of people that are just lazy in Christ. But that's not what God wants for you. God wants you to keep pushing forward. Yes, it's a lot easier to let go. Because your nature is for all of our nature is to let go. Meaning we are doing what's contrary to our nature. It's your nature to tell that lie. It is your nature to, to curse somebody out when they make you mad. It is your nature when you see somebody that is arousing or appealing to you to meditate on that. It is your nature to do whatever you need to do to get what it is that pleases you. That's our nature. But God has given us a new nature in Christ Jesus. So you are going against the grain. And yes, sometimes it may get hard. And yes, sometimes you may be frustrated. And yes, sometimes you ask, is it even worth it? I say to you, yes, it's worth it. And I know it gets hard sometimes. I know it's frustrating. But that does not make you say because you think of your nature the way your nature was. God just tell you to bring your nature up under subjection. So no, it's nothing wrong with you when you think that way. Or when that rises up out of your mouth. What you have to do is bring it back in up under subjection. If you want to change your words, you have to change your thoughts. And the way you change your thoughts is to renew your mind. And the way you renew your mind is get into the word. I know it's contrary to everything that we as humans believe. Remember, we have a fallen nature. So you are doing the odd thing by just serving Jesus. You're already the oddball. So I just want to encourage you today to hold on. Believe God. He hears you. He sees you. He knows exactly where you're at. He knows your frustrations, your agitations, your aggravations. He knows. And I assure you, he has metered and measured out everything that you're going to go through. That it will not be one hair heavier than what you can handle. So don't quit. Don't give in. Don't give up. I know just holding on, you're asking, what's the use? And just like, just might as well let go. No, just hold on a little while longer. I assure you, God is letting you know he's on the way. Okay? So that's just for every one of you guys. I don't know why the Holy Spirit told me to do that while I was at work today. Make sure you encourage my saints. And so, saints, hold on. He loves you. Let me even go a step further and take a moment and pray for you. Father, I pray that you bless the saints. You see what they are dealing with, facing and going through. And sometimes it's easier, Lord, to let go. As we, Lord, as humans, look around and see those doing whatever they want to do and seeming to be getting away with it, Lord, sometimes we feel like, what's the use? But the use is because you said so. So, Lord, help us that we may all hold on together. We may trust you and encourage one another. But bless us, Lord, that we stand firm in your word, that you may be pleased with us. And we'll forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, you're going to make it. God loves you. Okay? So what we're doing is we're going through. So those are the things that Paul was dealing with, sort of the division between the two people. He's watching the two groups, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He's watching them. And Paul was saying, I'm one of you guys. So if they're going to persecute me, they in essence are persecuting you, which being the Sadducees says to the Pharisees, no, nah, we're not going to have none of this. I don't see nothing wrong with what he said. The house divided. We're arguing amongst each other. Paul sitting there like this looking at him. And so what God wants you to do is stand firm and stand, for, um, stand firm on the ground that he has given you. You'll find out that others believe the way you believe. Just somebody need to be bold enough to stand for it because somebody going to put their finger on the sword, meaning the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees was commingling together. And, but there was a, a great rift between the two. And so when Paul put his finger on the sword saying the great rift is this, and this is what y'all angry at me about, I'm saying this ain't something I'm just saying I'm a Pharisee. My father was a Pharisee, so I came down through a lineage of Pharisees. So Paul said, I know the customs, the beliefs, and the laws of the Pharisees. But I also, I'm going to say that I know them. And so what he's saying is I'm looking at a division between the two. So again, that's what Paul is looking at. 
Um, and so we go forward. Um, let's see what call. I just want to see something. Let's see. So I can see. Okay. So we say it wrong. So the distinction between the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the multitude go back one. And Paul perceived that the one Paul was Sadducee, not Paul was Pharisee, and cried out, "Men, brother and die, Pharisee." Um, Okay, there you go. And the Sadducees, uh, there's no resurrection. Okay, there we go. Just making sure because as I was reading it, I'm thinking, well, hold on, wait a minute. Paul saying he's a Sadducee. Just made sure. So in verse number nine, verse number nine, moving forward, it says, and there arose a great cry, and the, and there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees parted. Apart arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And so what you find out is when people plot to come after you and you stand on the authority of God's word, God is going to make sure somebody is there to protect and or somebody is there to step in on your behalf. Because God's word says from the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is going to be established. So Paul is standing firm and you can see right there within their own group, you'll find out that the Pharisees rose up. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We don't find no problem with this man. So their argument now is not with Paul. Their argument is with half of the other group. And so they're fighting amongst one another about this thing because Paul knows God's word. Now, listen, as a matter of fact, again, look at this right here. It says, and there arose a great cry and the it says, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees, meaning all of them were scribes, meaning um, studiers of the word. That's what the scribes was. These were people that, that studied the word deeply. So you had both of them were scribes, both the Pharisees and the Sadducees were both scribes. But the scribes of the Pharisees parted rose and strove saying, we find no evil in this man. There's nothing wrong with him. But if a spirit, that's what it says, a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And so what he's saying, guys, is you need to, before you put your mouth on someone, and they said, this is of God. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Matter of fact, go back with me to Acts. I want you to go back to me with Acts, the fifth chapter. We're in the book of Acts. So go to Acts, the fifth chapter, and drop down to verse number, drop down to verse number 38, all the way near the end. Look at this right here. I need you guys to see this according to God's word. Matter of fact, I should have stayed where I was. That's why I had this. Okay, Acts 5 and 38. This is what the word of God says. It says, he says, and now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let and let them alone. For if they counsel or, or they counsel or, or this work be of man, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Let's have ye, let's have ye be found even to fight against God. And so what you're saying. Um, again, back in Acts, the fifth chapter, what was taking place is Paul again was beginning to deal with a situation where Jesus was on the scene and he was rising up on the scene, um, his ministry, the ministry was going forward and he was looking at these people. As a matter of fact, Paul was on the other side at this time and he's looking at these people standing for Jesus and proclaiming the word. And so the scribes and the Pharisees was coming at them again. And so what um, Gamaliel, one of those scribes, head scribes were like, leave them alone. Yeah, there's always a group that's going to rise up saying this is of God. There's always going to be some fad that's going to come up. God is giving me a new word and this is what you need to do. And you have a great following of people that will follow them because people don't know the word of God. And so what Gamaliel was saying to him back in Acts, the fifth chapter, is leave him alone. If it is of God, you know, if, if it's not of God, it's going to crash. It's going to turn out to be nothing. But if it's not of God, let me say, if it is of God, then leave it alone or you're going to find yourself fighting against God. Leave it alone for you find yourself fighting against God. Sometimes God calls you to a job, to do a job. And some people won't understand. But as we find out, some people will try to line up with a leader and not check to see where the leader is at. So you have to be careful who you come against. I'll give you an example, okay? Years and years ago in my life, what had taken place is I was at a particular church. And at this church, the pastor did not care anything for me. It was clear to see. I mean, the, well, there was some, there was some, some, there was some division there, and I made sure I stayed according to God's word, stayed according to God's word, 
and not cause any division with the man. But at the church, my father and I, we was there and um, other brother in it, and this pastor did not care. We would come to the church early so we could pray, just plead in the blood of Jesus. And and the pastor would walk through the church heavy while we was there, slam doors while we was praying. And so there was this couple that was there. And of course, people want to stand with their pastor, but they did not see the spiritual battle that was taking place. And so um, the wife really began to put her mouth on me and was saying things and speaking things. I did not argue. I did not fight. I know what God called me to do. When you know what God calls you to do, you don't get into arguments and fights. You just do what God calls you to do. And so I was not aware of what was taking place. But one day she came to me and she was just crying, really crying, her and her husband, and she was crying. And she asked for forgiveness. She said, the Lord told me. I can only tell you what she told me. She told me, she said, the Lord told me to go and apologize and keep my mouth off of you. And if I ever said something else to you, he would kill me. Now, I, that's, I can only tell you what was told to me. That's what she said. She said, uh, and she was like, you know, I just, I just want to ask you. And she was just crying while she was asking me for forgiveness. I had no all against her. I was not angry at her. I just said, I forgive you. I, I had no idea that that was going on, but yet I forgive you. Because I never want to hold any of God's people in bondage. But see, she had aligned herself with something that God was exposing. And he did expose this thing. And so the point that I'm making is when you stand with God and you stand, and that's what it was in Acts, the fifth chapter, Gamaliel was saying to him, leave him alone. Or yes, you'll find yourself fighting with God. Don't do that. Even if you don't understand what a person is doing or what is going on, just leave it alone. If it is of God, it'll live. If it's not, it's going to die because God is life and everything God touches brings life. Even when God kills a thing, it's for the purpose of bringing life. And you say, well, how is that? That seems to be contradicting. No. Think of anybody, anybody that know anything about um, pruning trees or bushes. Um, when you prune something, you're cutting it. It looked like you're killing it. You're taking off stuff. It looked like you were totally destroying it. But you're not. You're cutting back stuff for the purpose that it may grow healthier and stronger. Sometimes God prune you and cut stuff off of you so you can grow back healthier and stronger. So whatever God touches, when something is of God, it brings life. But it's of the devil. It will bring death. Something may be full and look good, but there's dead trees, dead limbs on the line that's killing it. And so that's what Gamaliel is saying to him. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. If it is of God, God will bring... Um, it's going to live. There's nothing we can do. We find ourselves fighting against God. And that's what the Pharisees are saying here to the Sadducees. Again, verse number nine, they're saying a latter part, it says, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, um, let us not fight against God. And so that's what you need to understand. If God has told you to do a thing, your job is to do the thing that God has told you to do. Now, verse number 10, it says, when there arose a great dissension between the um, captain the chief captain, um, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from amongst them and to bring him into the castle. Now, remember what is taking place. There, these people don't broke out in a war with one another. Now, starting, they broke out in the war and were trying to kill Paul. And the chief captain had to go get Paul and took him down into jail. But the problem was they beat him. And he was a Roman soldier. They shouldn't have did that. And so now Paul said, let me speak to him. And Paul is sitting there speaking to him. And now there's a fight that's breaking out. Paul is not. He's sitting there looking at this. But the chief captain is saying, he's looking at these people going at it and saying, let me get down there and get that man. Get him out of this. Now, why is the chief captain so, um, why is he so focused or fixed in on getting Paul out of there? There's a reason he's fixed in on getting Paul out of there. Well, go back just one, um, go back to one chapter. Go back to Acts, the 22nd chapter. Now, let's look at Acts 22, uh, 22 and go down to verse number 25. This is, this is why the chief captain was trying to get Paul out of there. He said in verse number 25, Acts 22 and 25, he said, and there, he said, um, and as they bound, and as they bound him with thongs and said unto him, Said, said unto the centurion, 
that stood by, is it lawful? And this is Paul speaking. Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? So that's what, remember, Paul was back in 22, he was in prison, and he asked them, they got him bound, they don't beat him. He said, is it lawful to beat a Roman? Remember we studied that? And he says, and when, the, and when the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, take heed, take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. And the chief captain came and said unto him, tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so he wanted to know, well, how do you become a Roman? He said, with a great sum, I paid to be a Roman. But Paul, and again, verse number 28, it says, And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul, and Paul said, But I was free born. And so what Paul is saying is, okay, we learned that Paul was saying, maybe you had to buy that citizenship, but I'm already a Roman citizen. Because Paul had dual citizenship. Dual citizenship. Father was a Jew, mother was a Roman. And so he had dual citizenship. And so here's what you're looking at with this. And so as they sitting there watching these people fighting amongst the other, the chief captain said, get down there and get him. Because if anything had happened to Paul, knowing that was a Roman soldier, I'm going to say knowing that was a Roman citizen, and yet there is a riot. I told you, Rome did not play that. All Rome was in the province that they took was peace. All they wanted was peace. So every province, Rome just wanted two things. They wanted peace and they wanted the taxes. And it would go back to Rome for the purpose of building what Rome was doing. And so what Rome, had, what the problem you have with these Jews, they're going at it, they're fighting, they're doing all their things. And so the chief captain said, I got to get him out of there lest something happen to him. Because remember, all of that, com all of that conflict was about Paul. They started out with trying to get at Paul. And so what was taking place is the um, the chief captain, remember as a Roman, when Paul asked to speak to them, the chief captain got away because it's almost like a religious setting. And Gentiles was not allowed into the religious setting of Jews. And so the chief captain is standing back at a distance watching this, keeping an eye on this thing. And as he's beginning to keep an eye, you can see that he commanded his soldiers, okay, this one got out of hand. Go get him. Go get him out of there. Let me tell you something. Even the enemy or the person that beat you, which was what happened with the chief captain, and the enemies, God got the enemies going at one another, and the one that had Paul in jail and beat him, God had him to go protect them. And so you may have find out that the person that was your enemy, God will use him to come and bring you to your rescue. And the people that are people that plot together against you, they're plotting together against you. What God says is, I don't have them going at one another. Your job is just to stand still and know that God said what he said is true. Know that God is for you. Know that God will see you through it. And so let them do what they do. Let them go the way they go. God is saying, I'm going to take care of my people every step of the way. He will not leave you, saints. Do not let the devil sell you the lie that you're alone. You are never alone. For the word of God says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So if God has called you to do a thing, and let me tell you if God don't call you to do a thing, how you know. It's scary. God will always call you to do something bigger than you. Why? Because if it's bigger than you, you need him. If it's something you can do, that, that's something you can do. So God called you to do a thing. It's scary. He takes you out of your comfort zone. You're afraid at all times that your weakness is going to be exposed. And so, God, you're going forward, but you're afraid your weakness is going to be exposed in any way. And so you trust God and you stay close to him. I, I want to give you this analogy in your head, how you see the father, okay? Um, you find this little cute puppy. I mean, he's energetic. He's a puppy. And he is, you know, running all around and he's running up on your shoelaces and he's trying to fight your shoelaces and you pushing him back with your feet. And the little dog is, he's just cute. But that's one thing. Now, say you had a grandbaby and your grandbaby is about one and a half, maybe two. And so your grandbaby come over there where you at and the little puppy start playing and jumping on them. But the grandbaby is scared. And so the grandbaby is crying and screaming. and You pick the grandbaby up. Now, that puppy is all over you and you're, you're not. There's no fear with you. You're kicking off the puppy, but you're holding your grandbaby in protection. So when God calls you to do a thing, that puppy is fear. That's all over you. But God picks you up and just kicked the fear back and said, I've got you. 
If God has called you to do it, I would assure you that God would equip you to do what it is he has called you to do. You just need to walk in faith and don't look for no glory. Many times people crumble because they think they're going to look bad or sound bad. And we don't want to look like a fool. But if you're doing something God has called you to do, you're never going to be a fool. You're going to be blessed. And so that's what God was telling him. Um, he had, remember, he had the ones that was trying to get him. He had them fighting one another. And the ones that just beat him, God sent them down to protect Paul. And it's the same thing God would do for you. Your enemies, God will make them protect you. Even as they planning and trying to catch you up in something and God expose them for what they're doing. And so verse number 11, it says, And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. See, when God gives you a promise, see, here's one thing you know. Look at this. There's key things I want you to see in it. And it's a lot that's in this one verse, but I condense it, okay? This is the first part he says, and the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, behold, and said, be of good cheer, Paul. Well, the first thing, if God is telling him to be of good cheer, that means Paul had to be stressing. Paul had to be stressing. He had to be worried about the situation. But God came and calmed him. It's okay. Be of good cheer. So that first thing you need to know is if God come into him and cheer him up, he had to be stressing about the situation. But not only that, look at this right here. Right after he says, be of good cheer. What did he say? Be of good cheer. Paul, God knows your name. And see, that right there is a great joy you need to know. See, God will speak to you personally. You are an individual. The word of God is collectively for all of us. But God speaks to us individually as people, individuals. God knows what you're going through. He knows your name. Which means he knows what it is you're dealing with privately. He knows the weight that is on you. He knows what it is that's really got you heavy. God knows you. He knows you deeply. So he says, for thou have testified. Now, another thing, we have established that God, God is coming to cheer him up because God knew the mindset that he was in. We also know that God knows your name. But look at this. For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also in Rome. That's a promise. That's a promise God has made Paul. You're not going to die. See, if God told him you're going to have to go to Rome and you're in Jerusalem, that's no way you're going to die. Because you got to go where God says you're going to go. And sometimes, God, if you listen to what God tells you, in the, um, in the thing that God tells you, he also makes the promise. See, when the word of God says, I was reading in the Bible, and the first part it says, and it came to pass. Well, that's a whole lot of information just right there with the first part. If it came to pass, that means although it came, it's going to do what? Pass. And so what God's saying is everything that's going to happen from this point on, when you read the Bible, sometimes he'll tell you in the beginning what's getting ready to happen in the end. So when the Bible says it came to pass, that no matter what you're going to read now, after these words, it's going to pass. So sometimes you're going through a thing in life and God just whispers in your ear and, and this too will pass. So although it may be the darkest time of your life, I can recall in the darkest time of my life when it was just thick and dark. I could not even hold my hand right here and see my hand from the thickness of the darkness of what I was going through in my life. The pressure that was on me, the burden that carried me deeply, the loneliness that I felt. All of these things coming, but yet the darkest time it was, I stayed close to my God. I can even recall one time just standing in my den, in my Den, and I was sitting there just walking like I was walking in quicksand in the place because the burden was so heavy on me and I was dealing with so much saints a lot now I just fell down in the floor and woke up the next day but see now God has blessed me and I'm in a season of light things are really going in a great direction for my family everything we're touching is God is prospering it leaves are all over the place blooming and I thank God, bless your name, Lord, and we are wise in this time. I know God's word. But I think back to that time when it was so hard and dark and thick. And sometimes, saints, believe it or not, I miss it. 
Not because of the hardness or the uh, hardness or the darkness or the thickness of what I was dealing with, but the relationship that I had with my God. Because when that puppy came running after me as a child, my father picked me up and he held me. And I was able to hold on to him and look at what was going on down there because God picked me up and carried me when I could not carry myself. Have you read the, um, the poem, Footprints? Remember when you looked down and only saw one set of footprints? It was because God was carrying you. Do you remember that time when the darkness was so thick and it was so heavy in your life you did not know if you were going to make it? And may even came to the point to where you said, I don't even want to make it. There were times, and I will be honest with you, I will be open and transparent to you right now. There were times in my life when the darkness was so thick. I never, ever considered suicide, but I wish somebody would have done the job. But here's the thing. If I died back then or checked out back then, there would be no Pastor Minor. There would be no firm foundation. And there would be no you listening to me. I don't care how dark it is. God has purpose for you. Maybe that's what he was saying in the beginning of this message. He has purpose for you. And if you quit now, you will never know what God is going to do in the end. There are people that are depending on your voice. They're waiting on your voice for God to release you that you may speak. Don't quit now. Don't give up now. Don't give in now. Stand firm. That's what God had to do with Paul. He had to encourage him. He had to continue telling Paul to go forward. Be of good cheer. I understand where you're at and what you're facing, but I also know what I'm going to do through you. I also know, what if Paul would have checked out? We would not have these books of the Bible. Do y'all know that man, everything after um, with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? After John, do you know Paul wrote all of the stuff after that? Pretty much everything after that. Yeah, I mean, Acts. I mean, Acts and Romans and 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. And, um, um, Gal uh, you know, just go going through the books. So three-fourths of the New Testament, he wrote it. So what if he had checked out? You don't know what God is going to do with you or through you. Don't check out. Check in. Hold on to the Father. And I assure you, I don't care how bad it is, it is the Father that is holding you while the puppy of life is coming at you. God is just kicking back with the puppy, playing with the puppy while he's holding you. But one day you're going to grow up and you will have command over the puppy. As you get a certain age, a kid will just give a puppy a fit. I mean, as a dog get older and a kid get a certain age, he, they bite the dog, they chew the dog, they ride the dog, they choke the dog, and the dog sitting there looking at you like, you're not going to do nothing about them, do, what they're doing to me? Because the dog knows you better not touch that kid or else your days will end. And so what God is saying to this situation, you will surely grow. And I assure you, once you grow, that little puppy in life, the things that you could not get over, you will choke those little things with no problem. Not going to even be an issue. God has to grow you because he loves you. He cares for you. Now, I was way off of where I wanted to go, but God was dead on what he wanted to do. God just wanted to encourage you to let you know he knows your name and he calls you by name. That means every single thing that you are dealing with, he knows it. Every weight that you are carrying, he understands it. And he even hears the conversation that the devil is trying to get you to turn back. And God says, no, just keep going forward. It's going to be a better day. I promise you. People are waiting to hear your voice. But it's just a little more time before God release your voice to the masses. You have that voice. And God says, I want the world to hear it. And so the devil says, check out now. And it'll be better. God says, no, the best is yet to come. He loves you. He cares for you. And he's going to see you through this. Father, we honor you and we bless you and we thank you for the time that we have had in your word. Oh, Father, bless the saints that as they had an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say, that you, Lord God, will permeate their hearts, that they may be able to take this word in and put it on their hearts and hold it deeply, that they may know exactly what it is that you have said and get busy doing what you have called us to do. Oh, Father, bless the saints with wisdom along with the knowledge that you have already given us, that we may use this at the proper time 
that we may stand firm, that you may grow us. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, and we honor you because we know you will never fail us. You will always bring us through. And we just want to tell you, Lord, we bless you, we love you, and we thank you for hearing our cry, standing on our plea, and bringing us through it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, saints, you know what? I just really feel happy about what God is getting ready to do in some of you guys' life. Please let us know what God is doing because I, I would love to know the person or the persons that God is talking to. He's getting ready to do something major. And the devil is really trying to talk you out of it. Don't get caught, guys. Trade for wooden nickels. They're no good. So stay with what you got. It's the best. Hey, let me ask this question. If you are one out there and you say, Lord, I have heard this message tonight and I know you are speaking to me. I want to get in right for standing with you, Lord. I want to get in line with your word. And what you're saying in this is, Lord, I'm going to give my life to you, Jesus, that you may be Lord of my life. I'm going to give my life to you. If you're that person, I got some good news. I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. Now, you may look and say, okay, then I'm ready. But before we take any more steps and go forward, let me ask, is there anyone that once knew him and you were in the body and you was doing your thing for Christ, but yet the devil talked it out of you. Maybe he used the saint to talk it out of you. Maybe misunderstanding. Or maybe you just saw some bad things and it talked it out of you. You said, nah, I walked away. And now I want to rededicate my life to Christ. Now, if you're that person and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, I have some good news for you. I want to walk you through God's plan of rededication. Hey, come and go with me. Just bow your head and say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that you have opened. Lord, I right now take my opportunity to walk through this door. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me for the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. If you, Jesus, will have me, I will serve you all the days of my life. Oh, Father, my Father, I pray, bless these saints that as they come in to you, that you, Lord, rule in their lives. So with an open mouth, I ask you, Lord, come into my heart. You, Jesus, sit on the throne of my heart, and I will serve you all the days of my life. I right now, by my own free will, accept you, Jesus, as being my Lord and my Savior. And I choose to obey you from this point forward. Forgive me, Lord, for the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for the way I have been conducting myself. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. I was already putting you in the family before I even finished the prayer. But, you know, thank you for taking such an opportunity and taking advantage of it. Because there are some that do not have this opportunity. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, they're going on to glory. And they can't get it right after you're gone. So welcome to the family of Almighty God welcome home. So if you one made that commitment, let us know. Put it in the chat that we may be able to just celebrate with God and thank God for you and another family member um, added to the body. Now you may say, okay, pastor, what do I do now that I have given my life to Christ? Get in a good Bible believing church, hear the word of God and act accordingly. You may say, well, I don't know what the word of God is. I, I don't know. Well, God gave me your gift. It's called the Holy Spirit. And see, with the Holy Spirit, what he does, he'll make sure you know what the truth is. But if you don't know right now, you don't know his voice right now, stay with us right here. We'll continue teaching you the word of God, praying that you grow in Christ to be able to know the Father's voice and be able to follow. You may say, okay, I want to be a part of Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry. How do I become a part of this ministry? Well, we ask you two questions. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You say, yes, I believe it. Okay. Second thing, are you willing to obey the rules and the regulations of this ministry so as long as it lined up with the word of God? You say, yeah, I can do that. We say, well, then welcome to Firm Foundation, a church that loves people right where they are and push them towards where God wants them to be. You may say, well, I want to come visit the ministry. I live close enough to where I will come. We are located at 1851 Highway 66 South in Kernersville, North Carolina. We would love to see you there. You will find out that we are a huggy people. We love to hug people. And we are very um, cordial people. Just love talking to people. You feel just as you at home. So you may say, okay, then I want to help support the ministry. 
How do I go about helping to support the ministry? You can go to our website, firmfoundationoutreach.org. There you will find there's a QR code where you can give or you can go the regular route. Hey, we love you. We thank God for you. We want to see you again right here on this page, right here on this channel. We're here every Wednesday night from 7 p.m. to 7, about 7.45. And every Sundays starting at 10 a.m., and going on to the service end. And it was not long. We do not hold you long. We respect your time. We love you guys. We thank God for you. Looking forward to seeing you right here on this page, right here on this channel. Be blessed in Jesus' name.